Board of Dispatch, I had a traffic stop at the Exxon off uh, Washington Avenue. Uh, I got a lot of movement in this vehicle. Go ahead and send me a nearby unit for backup. As a law enforcement officer, it's recognized that you frequently face serious and sometimes dangerous situations. As the person responsible for purchasing body armor for your agency, it is up to you to make the choices that will impact the budget of your department and the safety of the officers serving within it. Body armor is a life-saving tool and to be effective it must be worn regularly and be up to the level of street threat that your officers will face. Body armor types and manufacturers are many and choosing the correct type is critical to your agency. In response to the growing number of officer deaths due to firearms, the National Institute of Justice and the Office of Law Enforcement Standards began the joint mission of developing body armor comfortable enough to be worn full time, yet tough enough to resist the deadly force of bullet impact. NIJ Standard 0101.06 has been revised to include new armor classifications, rigorous testing methods, and a new conditioning protocol. NIJ's compliance testing program ensures that all body armor meets these new standards. The rule of thumb for law enforcement and departments is that you buy armor to match what the officer carries because statistically we know that officers have had their own guns used against them. So depending on what they're purchasing for, I have no doubt that today's NIJ 06 armor would go out and protect our men and women that are protecting the streets of America today. There is no bulletproof body armor, only levels of bullet resistance. Choosing the right armor for the right job is crucial. The most common threats faced by officers are the 9mm semi-automatic street pistol and their own service weapon. An agency's armor should, at a minimum, protect against both of these threats. There are three classes of flexible body armor designed to protect against handgun threats and two classes of armor for tactical operations facing rifle threats. Type 2A armor protects against lower velocity 9mm full metal jacketed handgun rounds and Smith & Wesson 40 caliber full metal jacketed handgun rounds. It is concealable and suitable for full-time use. Type 2 armor protects against higher velocity 9mm full metal jacketed handgun rounds and 357 magnum jacketed soft point handgun rounds. While heavier and more bulky than Type 2A, it is also concealable and is designed for full-time use. Type 3A armor protects against 357 SIG full metal jacketed handgun rounds and 44 Magnum jacketed hollow points. It represents the highest level of protection currently available from concealable armor and provides protection against most handgun threats. While generally suitable for routine wear, departments located in hot, humid climates may need to evaluate the use of Type 3A armor carefully. Type 3 armor protects against 7.62 mm full metal jacketed rifle rounds and represents the first tier of tactical armor. As such, it is not intended for full-time use and is designed strictly for tactical situations such as confrontations involving sporting rifles. Type 4 armor protects against 30 caliber armor piercing rifle rounds and provides the highest level of protection currently available. Because it is intended to resist armor piercing rounds, 
It often uses ceramic materials, which are brittle, and may provide only single-shot protection. As with Type 3 armor, Type 4 is intended only for tactical situations when the threat warrants such protection. NIJ Standard 0101.06 also defines a category of special threats. The NIJ Compliance Testing Program does not include testing for these special threats. However, an agency requiring a level of protection other than one of the five standard levels may specify additional testing, referencing the exact test rounds and impact velocities to be used. Departments should select body armor equal to their ballistic protection requirements, ensuring that each officer understands the maximum protection offered by the armor, as well as its limitations. Avoid purchasing armor with ratings greater than needed. This not only increases the cost, but also the likelihood that the armor won't be worn on a regular basis. The weight and bulk of armor are proportional to the level of protection provided. If possible, use armor samples on a trial basis before making a major purchase. I recommend you go to the company, investigate their facility, find out how they operate. I would go onto the NIJ website and I would check all past and current test protocols and I would make sure that you have a follow-up routine with the company that is selling your body armor to you so that you know that if a vest happens to fail down the line that they're going to come to you and they're going to tell you that that vest has failed and replace it immediately. Manufacturers make all kinds of claims. I would definitely go to the NIJ and check on their list of approved body armors because then you know from an impartial lab has tested these body armors uh, through all the different environmental conditions, uh, all the different projectiles. They go to an independent laboratory that does the testing in a standardized procedure, so it doesn't matter which laboratory you go to, you will get the same results. And now you know for a fact that body armor does protect against what it says it can protect against. Once your department's needs are determined, begin reviewing specific products. A listing of armor models that have been tested through the NIJ's Compliance Testing Program is available as grant funding for agencies needing to purchase body armor through the U.S. Department of Justice's Bulletproof Vest Partnership. To learn more, visit www.justnet.org. That grant has afforded over 400 of my officers, my sheriff's department, armor. They get 50% back, and all their department has to do is apply for the funds. So if an officer pays 50%, that 50% can send him home to his wife and his children, to his son, his daughter, so his mom and dad can see him again. When selecting an armor type for purchase, consider these factors. Remember that a manufacturer's warranty is not a benchmark for service life. It merely limits a manufacturer's liability on the product to a period of time. If the armor is to be worn under a uniform, consider concealable body armor. Keep in mind that a fit for male and female officers will differ. Tactical armor is not regular duty armor and is designed to be worn only when a heightened threat level is expected. Tactical armor is not typically designed with a gender in mind. Consider ballistic stab combination armor if a product is found that meets comfort and cost efficiency needs. If protection is needed beyond the capability of the selected armor, consider buying hard armor or trauma plates. Purchasing body armor is a big responsibility, requiring research and due diligence. Further information about the procurement process can be obtained by writing the email address on your screen. Always remember that the resources of your agency and the well-being of your officers depend on your decisions. If you follow the guidelines suggested and use the resources outlined, you'll be equipped with the knowledge necessary to make an informed decision for your department.